Good evening to all of you and thank you very much for the invitation to speak at this very impressive global business summit um, and talking about uh, the hydrogen economy and as you see the hydrogen economy is a very global business. Ladies and gentlemen, Russia's invasion of Ukraine shows us, especially in Europe but also globally, how urgent it is to move away from fossil fuels. We need to diversify our energy sources, establish reliable partnerships and implement coordinated action on hydrogen, all as quickly as possible. Along with security of supply, we need to provide for a climate neutral energy system. In Germany, our aim is to achieve full climate neutrality by 2045 in terms of how we do business and how we live. And that means in figures 750 million tons CO2 today to zero emissions in 22 years. This is a very, very ambitious goal. It means we are faced with the enormous task of delivering the radical transformation of our complex energy system. Simply cutting emissions and reducing dependencies is not enough. We must also make sure that energy prices remain competitive and guarantee security of supply at all times. The expansion of wind power and photovoltaics is the first step for the energy transition. However, not all processes are suited for electrification, particularly in the energy intensive sectors of primary industry or aviation. And not only that, we need to be able to store energy too. We heard about it. All of this makes green hydrogen a crucial piece in the puzzle. And when I see green hydrogen, I'm talking about climate neutral hydrogen produced from renewable sources of energy. Hydrogen is key to achieving a climate neutral industry. It plays a major part in sustainable mobility and it enables the long term storage of energy on a grand scale. Thus, hydrogen is the solution for many problems. It's therefore the German government's aim to use green hydrogen, support its rapid market scale up and establish the necessary value chains. And this is why the government of Germany adopted a national hydrogen strategy in 2020 and also Europe followed shortly after in July 2020. And under this strategy, we want to really take advantage of the many opportunities uh, offered by green hydrogen for the sake of the climate and for Germany as a location for business, but also for the sustainable development of emerging and developing countries with whom we want to build up supply partnerships for green hydrogen. Germany's hydrogen strategy pools the measures of the different ministries of the federal government, and it was funded with around 10 billion euros from the government. And this strategy facilitates and promotes private investment along the entire hydrogen value chain. Above all, we are counting on the following measures. Firstly, integrated projects along the entire value chain. We also want to enhance the regulatory conditions for investment in order to lower production costs and create incentives for infrastructure development. And hydrogen and its derivatives also play an important part in decarbonizing the transport sector. This applies particularly to areas such as aviation and shipping, where battery-powered engines are not an option for the long-haul heavy-duty trucking sector. We are strengthening research and development along the entire hydrogen value chain in order to support the market scale-up of green hydrogen and Germany as a center for technology. We do also research on new technological, technological concepts under real-world real conditions. A key issue in this context is converting unavoidable industrial emissions, for example, from the steel industry into primary products for fertilizers, plastics, or fuels. Green hydrogen certainly plays a vital role here, and India is surely interested in these technologies. It is also clear that we need international cooperation. Only if we join forces, we can succeed in the global transition from fossil fuel to renewable energy markets. And that is why India and Germany closed the partnership for sustainability and clean energy when Prime Minister Modi visited Berlin in May last year. By the way, in the next days, the German Chancellor Scholz will come to India to visit India with a big delegation of industrial leaders. According to this agreement, Germany will spend up to 10 billion euros until 2030 for projects in India. Projects to fight the climate change and to reach the net zero goal as early as possible. Talking about climate neutrality in my company, Tyson Group, 
we have to avoid around 20 million tons of CO2 emissions before 2045. And as you may know, we are running the biggest steel plant in Europe and will need hundreds of thousands of tons of hydrogen a year starting in 2026 to replace coal by green molecules in direct, direct reduction plants. We have an investment of 2.5 billion for the next three years in Duisburg. But Tyson Group is not only part of the problem. We are also help with solutions. We are one of the few companies in the world which build water alkalic electrolyzers in a big scale. This is the business of Tyson Group Nusera, for example, with a two gigawatt project in Neom in Saudi Arabia. And we are also one of the few companies worldwide able to build big ammonia and methanol plants uh, with a, produce, a production of about one million tons a year. And this is the business of Tyson Group Ude. And we will need a lot of this ammonia as a carrier to ship the hydrogen over long distances, as you cannot ship the hydrogen as a gas, also not liquid in the moment. There are no ships, no ships available. There are good negotiations ongoing between Tyson Group and Indian companies about common projects in India, and I think we will announce something uh, in the summer of this year. What is India doing in the hydrogen sector? We heard about the big ambitions. The, the goal of the Indian government is the production of 5 million tons of green hydrogen in 2030. This is written in the National Green Hydrogen Mission, which was published recently. This plan will, at the first step, severely accelerate the demand for renewable energy. The good message is there is undisputedly huge potential for the production of uh, hydrogen in India with solar power, but also with wind power. Solar power has this special feature here in India that it is much more stable over the day and also over the year um, more than most, in, uh, most of the other countries. The less good message is there is always a competition between the usage of renewable for the hydrogen production and the direct usage of renewable energy for decarbonization. And there is another conflict occurring. Will you in India use the green hydrogen to decarbonize your country? or will you export it? Germany and also Europe needs a lot of imported hydrogen. In Germany, we expect an import quota of up to 80%, talking about 100 terawatt hours in 2030, which means around 3 million tons of hydrogen a year. As you see, a very big market, and there's a lot more you can do with green hydrogen produced in India. Regarding the foreseeable big amounts of CO2 emissions, especially in the coal industry for the next at least 20 years, the production of synthetic aviation fuels, e-fuels or e-methanol made by hydrogen and carbon dioxide could be a very interesting option. We do a lot of research in Germany on all these carbon to chem technologies as an alternative for storing the CO2 under the earth's surface or the sea. The climate neutral fuels for the aviation industry, but also for the shipping industry, are, by the way, a future market worth many, many billions. And also other figures for the fast growing hydrogen economy are impressive. 680 major projects announced globally, announced globally reflect an investment of 240 billion US dollars by 2030. 22 billion US dollars or 10% in planned investments have reached FID, are under construction or are already in operation. And overall, the investment proposals need to triple to 700 billion US dollar by 2030 to meet the 2050 global net zero target. Europe set the goal to produce around 100 gigawatt of green hydrogen in 2030, but Europe has any way to importing more green hydrogen that it will export in the near future. And that is why we have to look outside of Europe in those regions of the world that are rich in wind and solar power. The German government has, for example, put together a hydrogen potential atlas for Western African countries. It maps the local potential for the production and export of green hydrogen, taking ecological, economic, social, and technical criteria into account. And the result of this atlas are very promising. West Africa alone could produce up to 165,000 terawatt hours of green hydrogen per year. This represents several times the amount of hydrogen that we probably need in Germany or in Europe. Furthermore, production would be very cheap. Most of it could be produced by under 2 euros 50 per kilogram related to the very low energy prices. Coming back to our international partnerships, the federal government is not just looking to partners in our neighboring countries of Africa, such as Namibia. It is also working on a strategic cooperation with Australia. 
And this is very interesting, as we already heard that India and Australia recently established an Indian-Australian economic cooperation and trade agreement. So India is perfectly situated between Germany and Australia and can contribute to our supply chain. And much better, all of this in, is wonderfully paying to the Indo-Pacific cooperation strategy of the EU launched in 2021. By the way, our high supply feasibility study with Australia mm -hmm. identifies the relevant regulatory, technical and economic obstacles that need to be overcome in order to develop a supply chain for green hydrogen. And one important message is that gives us confidence that the costs of transporting hydrogen are almost negligible in view of the favorable production conditions in regions with an abundance of sun and wind, such as India. We talk about transport costs of less than 10% of the end price of the hydrogen. And that's why the German government signed the bilateral hydrogen accord with the Australian government in summer 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, to come to an end, you can see that green hydrogen is a bus topic which is developing with incredible momentum. Now is the time to take the initiative. It is now a matter of sustaining this accomplishment while moving closer to the goal of climate neutrality at the same time, in all sectors of industry, mobility, and also heating. Therefore, we need three things. First, technological openness in all fields of application. Second, the fast scaling up of worldwide production capacities for green hydrogen in its derivatives means electrolysis, ammonia plants. We have still very low capacities at the moment. And third, sufficient import and distributing infrastructures. We need ports, we need ships, we need pipelines. Let us work together on these challenges. Germany, as a technology provider in India, in his roaring 20s, as we learned yesterday, which is tremendous possibilities under a strong leadership of Prime Minister Modi and very high ambitions on the way to becoming the third largest economy in the world. The slogan has to be, think big and act fast. I wish all of us every success in this endeavor. Thank you very much.